Hey guys, GreatGamer34 here. Now, recently I've been working on a project. Um, and I was browsing Minecraft forums, and I found that Koala Steams was working on a project similar, but his used more serialized logic. Um, I built a word processor in Minecraft. It can display every character on a keyboard a little differently than just a standard keyboard would do it. Um, we even have your W8, or we have our arrow keys here. Um, delete like certain things do different functions now like the delete uh, clears the screen and resets the pointer so basically it'll reset to the top left pixel up there and you'll see what I mean by pointer backspace will delete it I also have these two extra signal symbols uh, pi and sigma and then I have everything up here which the shift key works with so obviously the shift key will do the thing on top instead of the bottom I, I should have relabeled that differently but oh well um, so let's go ahead and turn it on I'll turn on the cursor, and the closer I get to the screen, the better it'll see it. Uh, the cursor blinks, but um, right now you're not seeing blinking. There it goes. Yep, the cursor blinks. Um, so now let's go ahead and write something. Let's write H. And if you look, it sends the sig it loads the character H from ROM sends it, uh, it, all these repeaters are synced uh, horizontally across, sends that down into a buffer system to hold that value for a certain amount of time before it can be displayed on screen. Uh, then it gets the character and moves the pointer over. Um, now I'm going to write H-E-Y, oh, I fell. Now I'm going to write H-E-Y, and instead of an E, I'm going to use sigma. So now we have to use our shift key. Now our shift key acts like a toggle. So now it'll stay on. And we'll press sigma. And then you'll see a sigma will pop up here. Damn it. Did a pi symbol. I should probably swip, swap that around. Um... I guess I didn't need shift. Um, let's do backspace. Backspace will then de delete and move backwards that char a character. It's faster than placing a character. And then let's try doing sigma now. But you saw pi, so now I don't have to demonstrate pi. And sometimes this thing can lag a lot. So there's the sigma. Or summation, whatever you want to call it. And let's do a Y. Um, and you'll notice that we only have capital font. And that's, I'll show you why. We have a bunch of ROM in the back. A bunch of ROM. Uh, we have 70 something characters that we need. I needed to code that characters including symbols. So there's the letters H E H sigma Y uh, yeah, obviously hey. Now when I press enter my enter button's uh kinda scrubby. When I press enter it'll just move it down and won't reset the pointer to the farthest left spot. So what we'll do is then we'll just click the left arrow a couple times to move the pointer. You only have to move it. Through. No, it's gonna loop around. I pressed it one too many times. Nope. Okay, I pressed it the right amount of times. If I press this any more time, any uh, like one more time, it would have looped around to the other end of the screen, and I'll demonstrate that off right now by pressing left. So you see how that is around there. Oh no. Okay, I thought that was the Yeah, the screen is really laggy. Um even though it updates, you don't see the update right away. So now as soon as I type a character, it'll sh move the pointer in. So let's try to s let's do um 
the ampersand's a pretty good symbol, so we'll turn on shift. Ampersand took me like three tries to code because it was a really it was a pain in the ass. This link the programmer guy is like completely oblivious to anything. Okay, so there's the ampersand. And now you'll notice our pointer should be right over there. Um, we can move our pointer around with any one of these directional arrows. Space will advance one spot forward, also the same as pressing the left key on this. Um, enter just goes down one, same as pressing down. Um, there's nothing to really go up or right except for these two buttons right here. And this is one of my favorite buttons. Delete, clears the screen, and resets the pointer. So, a little slower. But screen screen's cleared and the pointer's now here. Now you'll notice you still see things on the screen. That's because I haven't updated for us yet. Uh, slash speed. Uh, we'll put it on three. And there. It's been updated. I don't know why I put on speed three just for that. Um, now what's kind of nice about it is it's kind of spam spammy proof. Um, and the reason being for that is when it sends data to um, it it loads the data from ROM, sends it to this OR gate here, and then it also sends it to this RSNOR. Now whatever data gets sent gets saved into the RSNOR. The RSNOR gets reset approximately this many ticks after getting data. So it's a clocked RSNOR. So that this reset comes from the OR of all of them. So it gives it it's pretty much a, pu a pulse lengthener. It lengthens the pulse for this many ticks. When you lengthen a pulse for this many ticks, it'll allow it to go through. But as soon as I s if I try to send uh, this data, and then I send this data, it sends it to erase marks before it can handle the first amount of data. So it resets it twice, basically. Um, so it doesn't really hand it doesn't do anything when you give it data like that. Um, so basically, this bus then comes around, up and under, and gets branched off to a few more clock lines. Now this first one takes the output of the OR of all the lines and sends it this way on a clock, a clock line. This clock line then then comes all the way up and around to a monostable circuit to ensure that it's not a uh, too long or too short of a pulse and then sends it back around uh, it actually sends it right here and then it um, comes to this line which says hey allow allow that character that's been saved that's been loaded from ROM allow that character to go through so it allows that character to go through and then by that point the register over there that I had holding the data for the current ROM address is re reset. That's how that works. Um, so I have this logic back here. Um, this is the shift register for moving left and right. As you can see, this is the pointer in it right here. And there's like a, there's a little funky AND gate system set up in here. And we have some lines controlling basically how it works there's three lines entering uh, each vertical cell each cell vertically one line is the enable write one line is the erase that cell and the other line is the enable um, clock for that cell so if you look right in here you'll see these three of those lines come here this first line here is the enable clock so if I power it say like so this is probably gonna affect something above it, but who cares? It starts a clock. Oh, getting some lag. Um, when the middle line is triggered, it'll actually uh, allow this AND gate to go through. So it'll allow, it'll turn off all these comparators, this off subtraction mode, and allow or not off subtraction, but it'll allow the data from this repeater to be powered into the comparator and be allowed to go into this RSNOR of the screen. That's how I have my enable right. And then, oh, we got a Skype notification, but I'm just going to ignore that for now. 
Um, and then my screen reset just comes here and then resets all, all the RS Norris in that screen. Um, how I reset all the screens is I trigger all the cl uh, resets at once. And there's just some busing here. Um, now you'll notice that's the horizontal shift register, so I, I obviously need to have a vertical shift register because I have four vertical lines for characters to be inputted. So here's my vertical shift register, and I've designed every part on this myself. So usually I borrow some port parts from other people, uh, especially when building CPUs, because designing like a CLE ALU yourself that's four ticks is a pain in the butt. So I usually use new masters, but everything here is designed myself. Now these um, shift registers have a rotate function on it, so when uh, the pointer right here, it gets shifted up one more, cause it, and since there's no place up else for it to go because it can't shift up, it'll actually loop back down to the bottom, and I can demonstrate that by clocking it right here. And you'll see, not at the top anymore, it's actually down at the bottom. And the same works from the other way. If I clock the bottom line, it'll send it right back up to the top, like that. Now my ROM bank. But this is the most fun thing to do, and by fun I mean I hated it. Um, basically every character is stored in this ROM that I can display. So this ROM goes on for about 70 something cells. Um, right here is address 35 and that's the letter P. 36 is that character. Uh, 40 is a dot. 41 is a col one of them things. And here's some numbers that I just So there was a lot of bug testing going into this to make sure each address lined up with the correct thing. Um, and all the, oh, I have some extra addresses left over just in case I wanted to do something with it. I can, it's still expandable. I can add more stuff to my keyboard and have it input a few more things. Um, so when this RAM is, uh, uh, ROM is read from, I, have s I have it set up so that it doesn't really need to be synced, but it is. It gets read out here, synced, uh, horizontally, not, um, serially, does that make Synced serially, not synced horizontally. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it, it's synced in a specific pattern. Now, this gets turned around this way, and then this is how my I bust vertically upwards and was able to branch off into each one of the four cells going up the ROM. So if I take a look back, you'll be able to see that this right here, that diagonal, goes to that first ROM, uh, first uh, that top line. Then the second diagonal here goes to the second line down, third diagonal, and fourth diagonal, so on. Um, that's just sending the data from the ROM into the screen. The screen is then controlled like this, and I know it's slow and unsynced, but that's what it is. And then, yeah, the cursor is just a little feature I added on that you can actually see right here. This controls it. So, for example, that's. Uh, half a pixel of it. Um, yeah, and that's almost all of it. And if you remember, I was spamming inputs and stuff. That's all that got through. You really can't break this. Um, I'm just. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I have a period programmed, but I'm not sure because sometimes I don't. I don't, I, I don't think I. I think I overwrote that cell with a different character. Oh, no, we got a period. Okay, so period works. So there it is. Oh, also, this lamp, I forgot to mention, this indicates when you can enter a new character. So let's see if I enter that character. We will then wait. You'll notice that it's, you can see it getting sent through that repeater chain and then this will flash. And that means I can enter a new character. And that's how it works. Um, if you guys, I really can't do a tutorial on this because it's so massive, but you can design one yourself. I mean, um, I'd like to shout out to Qualis Themes because I looked at his and saw, I was kind of jealous how, that he did serial, but I had this planned out before I saw his stuff, which he started working on way before me. But I finished projects fairly quickly, I, in my opinion. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll try to put a map download of this or some sort of download uh, and see you guys later make sure to subscribe